Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Remotely Speaking Up. This is episode four, and in this episode, we're focusing on remote positions and whether or not remote working is suitable for all jobs. So we have Julie Turney here with us, Chief Energy Officer at HR at Heart Consulting, as well as HR Manager at Hayuna International in Barbados. So Julie is going to be talking to us a bit more on this topic, but I'm going to turn over to Julie right now to tell us a bit more about herself, her background, and what it is that she does. So hi, Julie. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Rochelle. Um, thank you so much for having me. I really am happy to be a part of this podcast. Um, so I am originally from the UK, so born and bred Manchester, Mancunian, 100%. <laughs> uh, but I moved to Barbados around, oh, I'm not going to give my, I'm going to age myself, but I moved here when I was 13. Yeah. And um, my mom is Barbadian, my dad is Jamaican, but I was born in the UK. So I do describe myself as a Brit Bay Jam. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. Is that right? Right. Right. Yes. <laughs> that was like a song. I like it. <laughs> I know. Like it's like the cocktail, the best cocktail you could ever have. Give me have a brick for Jan, please. You're right. That that goes. Goes. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> nice. I've been in human resources for um just over 15 years, mainly in the generalist space, but I've worked a lot with um expats and um, bringing them from their base country to Barbados to live and work um, and I've pretty much worked in organizations with expats for about just over 11 years so probably the bulk of my career has yeah. been based on working with expats and dealing with nomads yeah. and I always strive to ensure that people have a good experience when they work in our organization mm. so always driving for good culture um, and I love energy because I think positive energy is important. Negative energy also um, can also create great things from negative energy as well. So yeah. um, I've always been fascinated with bringing good energy to an organization and yeah. making the best experience that I possibly can for the people in the organization. So I yeah. wouldn't describe myself necessarily as an HR professional, but more of a people experience professional because I, I believe that. that everybody in the organization deserves a great experience no matter who they are amen to that i'm, I'm very passionate about that I, I describe myself as a good work advocate because yes. for exactly that reason i think because we spend so much time at work you know why should we be spending that time miserable <laughs> exactly exactly you want the best experience when you come to work yeah and you should be able to bring your heart to work mm. and not yeah. leave it on the doorstep People yeah. need to be able to recognize who you are and be able to bring that balance to you um, yeah. when you're having your off days. But bringing your human to work is very important. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people say recently, bringing your full self to work. And I, exactly. I totally agree. Exactly. So I know you've also, you've been speaking on various platforms recently. Yeah. And you've been doing some amazing things, which I've been Thank admiring. You. So well done. Thank and you. The, one of the topics that you've been speaking on as well is remote working. And I know yeah. you're involved with that because you, as you said, you helped to organize a lot of expatriate experiences and experiences for nomads within your company. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a bit about how you got into that specific area, that area of remote working and managing expatriates? So or, as I said, the organizations that I've worked with mm -hmm. up to present um, with Hayuna, we've had expats who come from their home countries to live and work in Barbados and so that's how I first got involved in working with expats relocating yeah. um, and then I kind of formed a business out of it because I realized that I was really good at helping people move from one country to the next yeah. and it started to catch on and then I started to get referrals and people would message me or email me and ask me mm -hmm. I'm looking to move to Barbados and work for X amount of time, can you walk, walk me through the immigration, immigration process and, you know, what are some of the things that I need to be cognizant of? Um, I want to bring my family. Can I bring my dog? Those kind of questions yeah. started to yeah. come, you know, and, you know, just helping people through that particular experience. You know, I want to serve. Where's a good yeah. place for me to go to learn to serve? Yeah. You know, I want to do basketball. My wife teaches basketball. Is there somewhere she could go to teach basketball? I've yeah. had all of those things actually yeah. 
happen because usually when an expat comes to live and work here, they're, they're bringing their family mm. and usually it means that their spouse has given up their job wherever mm. they were to then come and live here mm. while their, their spouse or their partner works here. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's what activities can I give my partner to fill their time while we, while I am at work 24 yeah. seven. And so yeah. you kind of work you now to help the partner as well, um, yeah. have a, a good experience while they are here because they're not looking after the children 24 mm. seven. They're probably, um, their children are going to school or they're in activities. What can I do to keep my partner occupied? Yeah, that's quite that's so important when it comes to the expatriate role because you hear a lot about expatriate assignments failing and they don't fail because necessarily of the in role let's say the task or that person's inability to perform the task yeah but often it's because the person hasn't adjusted to the local environment and that stress is spilling into the the office environment exactly so that's that's so important what you mentioned there yeah so with regards to um positions generally in terms of remote work i know a lot of expatriates would operate at a very high high level high skill level but mm -hmm. of recent we know that positions have been made remotely across the organization because of covid yeah uh, have you seen any, any sort of challenges to doing that what what do you see as or what have you seen as the main challenges during this time to switch in or convert in a position to a remote working one I think a, a lot of the challenges come with one of the main things I, I think people challenge will have a problem with is trust. Yeah. So like, can I trust this person to work 100% remote? Yeah. If the trust isn't there before you give that person that position to work remotely, mm. chances are the relationship is going to be strained even more if mm. you allow someone to work remotely. So yeah. I think building trust while you know you're actually working face to face mm -hmm. is important yeah. and the psychological safety for the person to be autonomous in their role yeah these are two things that are very very critical i think in terms of people being able to accept mm. that someone can work remotely yeah and from a caribbean perspective trust is very hard when it comes to those things there's a lot of micromanagement that still happens in the caribbean yeah and having that person physically in front of you mm -hmm. and i think for a lot of people as we went through and as we continue to go through covid19 a lot of people struggled with that um being able to recognize if the person was being productive yeah and so we found that a lot of people once like for, for instance with barbados once lockdown was over a lot of people returned to work versus mm. trying to figure out like if you could you know work remotely and continue yeah. to work remotely um, because the trust wasn't there yeah yeah it's quite um a scary thing and i mean we've seen it within the uk context recently there was an announcement yeah. in the newspaper you mm -hmm. the announcement yes by the prime minister that uh -huh. <laughs> i've been reading <laughs> yeah. scary stuff come back to yes my stuff. hr community is not happy about that at all from the uk i don't think the whole uk community is happy about that <laughs> i saw those tell those um words blazing in the um title come back to work or risk losing your job i mean jobs yes that that is such a u-turn of the message where we're yes. saying that we need to care for people's well-being and mental health especially yes. concerns around covid as well so yes. that is its own kettle of fish absolutely but, um, it, it, it points to that problem um with a lot of um organizations well within the caribbean context and wider that that worry about okay what is the employee doing doing um, mm -hmm. what should they um what should they why sh why should they be working from home and not in front of us yes. so what about so trust we know is, is a massive one but do yeah. you think um from that employer's point of view they're also considering some barriers within the the actual job role itself is there anything about specific job roles that you think that would challenge um oh. So sure, like I think what we talked about before we started recording in terms of yeah. some customer service roles definitely cannot be done remotely. 
But I think that this is a great time for HR professionals. And I keep saying this, the wonderful time to be in HR. When I say that, some people go, you, girl, you crazy. <laughs> but it really is because it's a time, this is a time where we now get to show up, really show up and show our value as business partners Mm. and why we deserve that seat at the table because this is the time now where we get to say to people let's look at all of these roles that mm. we have in our organization right now let's have some retrospectives with our team mm. and figure out as we talk to our leadership can these roles be done remotely what are the barriers that you are thinking that you will experience outside of trust outside of not having the right equipment and tools for the mm -hmm. person to carry out the role, what are some of the things that you think will be a problem? Mm -hmm. Because, and then let's try to deep dive into, how, let's figure out how we can solve some of those things. Can they be solved with a five minute call, with a daily stand up, with a, you know, trying to figure out with a, where the blockers are, what it could be figured out with technology. Can we use things like Trello or Asana to look at digital job boards to find out how people are progressing with their day-to-day -day tasks versus yeah. micromanaging people? Yeah. But just under, are we setting the right KPIs or OKRs yeah. to make sure that our people understand what the vision is and what their role is? Because when people understand what the overall vision is of the company, when mm. they understand what they are expected to do and how they are expected to contribute, mm. people go off and do their thing. Yeah. They will go off and do their thing and they'll do it very well. Yeah. But this is the time where I say HR can really show up and mm -hmm. sit down and take the time to deep dive with their leadership and then help them to coach them, coach their managers and then yeah. help them to discuss with their employees these are your options. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you think will stop you from being able to work full, full time from home? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to work full time from home? Some people maybe only just want two, two days. Because yeah. some people have realized in this particular instance that they don't like being at home with their family all <laughs> day long. They're either too noisy, they're too much, too much, too much. Yeah. You know, and so they're okay with being at work. So I think this is a great time for HR to show up and really help mm -hmm. organizations to figure out how we could go forward, mm -hmm. what roles can be performed remotely, what can't be performed remotely, mm -hmm. what tools do we, people need, what do we need to give people from an emotional intelligence perspective mm -hmm. so that they can manage their people well and have great outcomes. All again, comes down to the people experience that we're trying to create in the organization, right? Absolutely. You are preaching, Julie. <laughs> you are preaching. <laughs> so, <laughs> in, your, in your time of doing that and kind of going over these roles, have you seen um, scenarios where, let's say, organizations might have reviewed a, a role and had to rewrite parts of that role in order for it to fit better working remotely or split that role in half or whatever the scenario? What have you seen? So I'm seeing that now, especially in my... Um, current organization, Hyena, um, mm. there are, we're a tech company. Yeah. There's, there's nothing about what we do that can't be done remotely. Yeah. But one of the things that you always want to foster again is the people experience, the teamwork. Yeah. So what we have done at this point is kind of started to review people's roles mm. and, you know, look at what works, what doesn't work. And I guess um, also because of changes in legislation yeah. that are coming our way from a bar from Barbados um, standpoint in terms of making sure that people have the right, that we as an organization, number one, mm -hmm. have good job specifications and we are yeah. clearly outlining what the role requires and then that we have the right people in the right seats. Yeah. And we have the right people in the right teams. Yeah. So all of these things now we're seeing causing us to now look at reevaluating. Mm -hmm. Do we need to change some stuff? Yeah. And if we do, what do we need to change? And again, I say this is a great time for HR to show up. Yeah. <laughs> and make their contribution towards creating a great people experience. HR, are you listening? <laughs> 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 yeah, I totally agree. So can you give us an example of, um, let's say, some of those, you mentioned some legislative changes that's going to impact those sort of decisions. Can you give us, give us an example of, of one of those changes and perhaps a role and how 
what might be the sort of thinking now and review of that role, what that might look like? Sure. So like the legislation that is coming up now for us um, particularly speaks to um, a lot of things that have happened during COVID-19. Mm. So discrimination. Yeah. And making sure that we are not being discriminatory, discriminatory when we recruit. Are we holding back from recruiting people because of their sexual orientation, their religion, or their race? Mm. Are we holding back from recruiting people because they don't have the necessary certification? Mm. Are we saying that every role requires a certification? Mm. And, and one of the things that we never did before was job specifications. Yeah. Um, we never really outlined what it require, what is really required to fill a particular role. You put a vacancy in the newspaper and you say, I'm looking yeah. for a web developer. Yeah. And I want this person to have a computer science degree, but is the computer science degree relevant? Yeah. If the person did the computer science degree five years ago, no, because the technology has changed. Yeah. But what is the person really doing to stay relevant in that space, in their role? Yeah. And so when you think about all of these things, what am I doing as a hiring manager to continue to reevaluate that role? Mm -hmm. A job description cannot be a one size fit all if I'm in an if I'm in a role or in an organization where things are continuously evolving, mm -hmm. where tech is continuously evolving. Mm -hmm. And so I have to keep up to date with that. Mm -hmm. And making the hiring manager more accountable is what we're gonna see is gonna start to happen coming to the fore because HR cannot do it all. Yeah. The HR can't be responsible for a job when they don't know the mechanics of the job. Yeah. I am by no stretch of the imagination a developer. I'm not a database administrator. I'm mm -hmm. not a data engineer. I'm not yeah. a quality assurance engineer. And I rely on the people who are performing these roles to tell me what is required for this role. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I need to ensure that we are hiring the right people. Yeah. Um, but the hiring manager needs to ensure that they are giving me the necessary information for me to bring the right candidate to their door yeah so all of these things come into come into play as we look at the changes that are going to come in our legislation going forward it's mm -hmm. making organizations more accountable for the yeah. roles that they are hiring for and putting people in the right seat yeah 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 does, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense um, because I guess a greater understanding of the role would bring a greater understanding of wh how that role can be executed, especially exactly. what can be done within the organization, outside the organization. Exactly. Um, and what, to what extent do you expect to see more candidates, let's say, for example, inquiring or making their decision about taking the job based on whether or not it can be completed remotely? We're seeing a lot of that now. Like I, I've, seen, I've been seeing that for years. Like a yeah. lot of people, um, but especially in recent times as we recruit, um, and because we don't recruit necessarily every position locally, yeah. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of candidates when I um, reach out to them, especially on LinkedIn, are asking, "Is this position remote? Can it be done remotely? Yeah. Or am I expected to travel to Barbados in order to fulfill this role?" Yeah. And so I'm getting that question now um, mm. more than ever before. Mm. Can this position be done remotely? Um, from a local perspective, I am seeing um, a few people ask that question as well. Do, mm. Am I going to be required to be in the office every day in order to perform my day-to-day -day task? Or can I do this position mm. from home? We're going to get a lot more of that as people start to reevaluate work life. Mm. We say yeah. work-life balance, but I say life-work balance because yeah. I think you, I don't think you live to work. You work to live. Yeah. Right? yeah. Therefore, your life-work balance is what should matter more so than your work-life balance. Yeah, you're, you're very much right. I think it's become a case as, um, as you get more involved, as the situation becomes more chaotic, that your work does tend to define 
or it, it's, it's unfortunately it's become the case for a lot of people where their work yes. you know, tends to define a job but you're very much right it really should be the other way around other way around mm -hmm. work is meant to be a means to an end and well Correct. you enjoy it brilliant um so i totally agree and with regards to the remote working and that demand in those positions i think it's, it's really key that organizations remember that especially what you're saying because um that's going to determine just how wide your talent pool will be if exactly that you're you're limiting some positions because it doesn't you don't have the option of remote working but other places are offering that you're losing exactly out on key talent exactly and and just think about it right we have multi-generations converging in the workplace right now mm. and never before have we had this situation where there are so many generations in one yeah. space at any given time yeah and the, when we look at generation z what they require and what they value now more than ever before is that they want purpose they want to understand that they have a, they have room to develop and grow in their roles they want to know that they are fulfilling something or they're meeting the values of the organization and they want to know that they're adding value as well and yeah. these things are truly important to them and so how they work and where they work yeah they don't want drama they don't want confusion i mean yes we, we might very well say we don't want that either mm -hmm. but look at where toxic toxicity exists in organization mm -hmm. and look at the organization now who are moving away from demanding that people have a seat above yeah. in a seat every single day 24 24 hours a day yeah those changes are what people are requiring and okay if, I, if you're not open to me being able to work remotely all the time are you open to me taking a sabbatical yeah because that's the question they're asking are you open to me taking three months off and then coming back and starting again yeah and this is not a fallacy this is something that people are actually doing organizations mm -hmm. are actually doing that mm -hmm. These I'd are like things to, to take into consideration. Yeah, I'd like to see more of that actually, because I know a lot of organizations in theory offer sabbaticals, but in reality, uh, they don't often approve them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a catch-22 there. But yeah. I, I really, I really would like to see that change because as you're as you're you, you pointed out with the generations and the, the change in demands, the change in work expectations, then along with that should go the changing um, style of management, the changing exactly. practices and so forth. So I think where you get that resistance sometimes is maybe we're still trying to operate in the old way. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add something else to that as well. Yeah. When you think about a lot of the roles that we are performing now, more so than ever, are requiring us to use more of our brain capacity than yeah. ever before. Mm -hmm. And for people who have, you know, physical laborious jobs, if you're in construction, you know you can't work from home if you're in construction. Yeah. You're building, you're, you're <laughs> on the job on a daily basis. Yeah. Versus um, you're creating strategies, you are dealing with mergers and acquisitions and all the mm -hmm. moving parts that are entailed in a merger and acquisition. Yeah. You are create, you are planning a career path. You are developing a business model. Um, mm -hmm. All of these things take brain power. They are not straightforward things. Sometimes it requires a lot of research before you actually put pen to paper. Even if you're just developing a speaking engagement, the yeah. way you're going to engage an audience take a certain amount of brain power out of you in order for you to do that if yeah. we are doing these things five to seven days a week there's going to come a point in time where we are going to burn out yeah because you can only do so much and then no more right yeah and so when you take that into consideration there comes a time where you have to make a decision I and mean, my body needs a break either my body needs a break or my body will take the break for me yeah, yeah. and so when you take that into consideration you recognize now people are using their brain their brain capacity more than ever before mm. to perform a lot of these roles and you need to be able to dial down dial yeah. it back from yeah. time to time mm. why are we seeing so many deaths in the banking industry mm. people aren't taking the necessary breaks they're burning out 
they're yeah. bre- breaking down. They're not taking care of themselves the way that they should. Yeah. So we have to get more holistic in the way that we look at work and life. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I hope to see, I know within the UK context, especially there's been a lot more stress on mental health and well-being in the current situation. Um, because of some of the things you mentioned before, let's say working from home, you have your whole family there and so forth. Or sometimes you're working from home and that becomes even harder to keep a work-life balance because sometimes you find yourself waking up and working right around the call. Exactly. When do you switch off? Yeah, yeah. So I think the organization really needs to play a big role in in making sure that that balance is accessible. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So where should organizations start? Where do you think organizations, an organization who wants to create this really holistic model where persons can work remotely and they can facilitate that through different positions and so forth, where should they start building such an an idealistic model? Again, yeah. The rebel in me says, yeah. you start with the people. Yeah. You start with the people and, and have small focus groups or create thought exchanges to find out from people what do they want. Yeah. We become more agile at it. Yeah. So we know that we want to create a work from home strategy yeah. um, versus policy. Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. And what does that strategy look like? It involves the people who it's going to impact at every level. Yeah. So whether it is that we meet with the various departments, Mm. individual, or we meet with them individually, um, each department, department, and we break it down and we talk to their leadership, we talk to the people on the ground, and we find out what they want. People know what they want. All you have to do is ask them, right? Yeah, And then you need to make the decision as a business, what will you allow Mm. versus what you won't allow. Yeah. I think it's very simple. I think that we try to make stuff harder than it really is. Mm. If I talk to, as a parent of three, and my children being varying ages, 22, 17, and 15. Yeah. I am at the stage now as a parent where I don't need to guess what my children want, they can tell me. Mm. They have told me what they wanted from age two and up because from ages two to three, they were speaking loud and clear and able to voice and express yeah. what they wanted from what they didn't want. And as a yeah. parent, it was my responsibility to make sure that I give them a good experience through life. Yeah. Whether that includes, you know, some form, always love, yeah. some form of discipline in between, but always honest, transparent dialogue between my children. Yeah. And I try to take that to the workplace. Yeah. I treat people like people yeah. and not babies. So you tell me what you want and let's see if we can work within the, the parameters of legislation yeah. and policy to yeah. figure out where we can find the happy medium. As long as I am within the bounds of the law, I'm good to go, right? Yeah. If I create a policy that gives me a little bit more, or if I create a process yeah. that yeah. makes the, the employee feel the happy, valued, and respected, and that I'm easing their pain, yeah, then we have a win-win situation. Yeah. So I say start with the people. Ask mm-hmm. your people what they want. Yeah. Make it abundantly clear the rules that you don't believe can be done remotely and mm. chances are they won't argue it because if they know it can't be done remotely yeah. a garbage truck driver cannot work remotely yeah technically they're driving around and they're moving your garbage so they are you know yeah out, out of the office but yeah you know truck workers cannot work remotely yeah because <laughs> we need them to give us our food you yeah. know there are certain rules that just can't done, be done remotely. People will not argue that. But where you're looking to meet rules remote, talk to the people and find out what they want. Yeah. You don't have to guess. You don't have to cre- go home and create this one big strategy and then roll it out. Talk to the people. When you involve the people, it makes life a whole lot easier. Yeah. 
Totally agree. And just for our international listeners, listeners, let me just tell you that Chefette is the best fast food restaurant in Barbados. So if you ever go to visit, you yes. cannot leave without going to Chefette. Yes. <laughs> Ask Rihanna, yeah. she'll tell you. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I totally I agree with so much with what you just said, Julie, and especially where you say, well, your big mantra is starting with the people. And it really stresses the importance of having that two-way dialogue as well. And yeah. a lot of companies, especially within the Caribbean context, sometimes that dialogue is very top-down because we, we tend to have a very controlled style of management. Yeah. So I think really opening up that dialogue in the other direction is really going to where you're going to start to get that innovation Absolutely. results and getting the answers that will answer your own questions as opposed to having to go and research and dig somewhere else. So exactly. Yeah, exactly. Man, I, 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 that full hands up. I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you. So You've shared so much with us with regards to remote working. Can you give us, just as we wrap up now, can you give us maybe a best practice example of where you've seen an organization that has made that really smooth transition to remote working, whether it's your own organization or otherwise? Well, I'll talk about my organization, but I also think that when you look at a lot of what's happened globally, Mm -hmm. you look at um, organizations like Twitter yeah. um, that have made that decision to say to your people, their people, look, you don't have to come back to work. As long as you're getting the work done, yeah. that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. You know, work in the confines that makes it comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's the right approach. Mm -hmm. For countries like UK and Europe and North and South America, a lot of people spend a lot of their time in traffic. Yeah. They spend a lot of time commuting to and from work. When you take that away from people, I remember once, maybe in my early 20s, looking at how much it costs to commute from outside of London into London. Mm. So if I'm catching the train to some, if I'm catching the bus to the train station to then catch yeah. a train to then catch a tube yeah. to then have to catch a bus to yeah. get a little bit further or to actually walk to work yeah. I spend at least two and a half hours one commuting way. Yeah. one way yeah that is costing me four thousand pounds a month yeah how yeah how like how and then when I think of those things and I think of, look at my situation, it takes me half an hour to get from home to work. Yeah. Even if I'm stuck in traffic, maybe 45 minutes to an hour to get from the West to the South Coast, which is where, I, where my office is. Mm. What we decided to say to people is, if you want to continue to work from home, we are fine with that. Mm. 50% of the office returned because yeah. the, their houses, their home life was just too chaotic. Too many people yeah. in the house, they can't concentrate and they decided they wanted to return to work. They missed their co-workers yeah. and they returned and they wanted to return to work. Whatever reason, yeah. they wanted to return to work. 50% of our office remained at home yeah. because they were okay working from home their circumstances and their situation afforded them the ability to be able to work from home. Yeah. And we are okay with that. Yeah. And I think that if you're able to give people that flexibility, our productivity during lockdown actually increased. Yeah. Yeah. When people were work when we were all working from home, including our customer service, because we have a call center with over um, 30 agents answering emails, calls and chat. Mm -hmm. And they were able to do that from home. And all we did was we said, take your, if you have a computer, mm -hmm. bring it in. We'll start it out so you can work from home. Yeah. Or if you don't have a computer, you can take your workstation home. And we also allowed our corporate staff to take their workstation home. Yeah. So that meant some people actually literally took their desk home <laughs> because they didn't have that at home. So yeah. some people took their, literally took their desk 
or they took whatever ergo, uh, ergonomic equipment yeah. we had given them in order for them to work safely in the office, yeah. they were able to take that home. And then people made the decision either to return it or mm -hmm. they, you know, continue to return to work or they continue to work from home. But yeah. we've been okay with that. Mm -hmm. Productivity has not suffered as a result. Yeah. We continue to do our virtual um, daily stand-ups yeah. um, because we work in an agile way. So we yeah. do our, you know, 30 minute daily standups where we're asking people, what mm -hmm. have you accomplished today? What is blocking you from it? If you haven't accomplished everything you wanted to, what is yeah. blocking you from doing that? How can I help you fix that? Yeah. Um, those are, that's, that's the essence of the call every day. You go around the room, talk to the team. What are you working on today? What have you not been able to accomplish? What is blocking you? How can I help you? That's yeah. and ultimately first and foremost how are you feeling yeah <laughs> exactly. how are you feeling because that must come first i am interested in the people and what they are thinking and feeling as they go through their day-to-day -day work like yeah and how that is impacting them yeah once we do that then it makes life a lot a lot easier and again mm. comes back down to what i say all the time when you're in an organization and you're in the capacity that I am in, or you're in a leadership role, your most important thing is how am I giving people the best experience mm. they need right, right now? Cloud, Cloud Silva is the yeah. chief heart officer at Veda Media. I admire her so much. And the one thing that she says every day is how can I light people up? Yeah, I like that. I, like I that. love it. I love it because that makes all the difference in the world. If you're focused on your people and how you can light them up every single day, mm. it, every day should be a win. Even yeah. the days that you fail, it's still a win because you, you've learned something new. Yeah. You, you've yeah. developed your people, right? Yeah. It becomes a lot, everything else flows a lot easier from there. I totally Absolutely. agree. Absolutely. Yeah. People experiences it. Yeah. You really, um, you, you bring home such key points there. It reminds me of an organization I was at before a university that I just accepted a job there. Um, this was some years ago, and, but I accepted this job and I was to start on July 1st, but I had holiday booked for July 15 and I was going to Barbados for four weeks. So I was like, oh my gosh, um, how is this going to work? I'm the new employee and I'm going <laughs> on holiday <laughs> for four weeks. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I, I, I would lose my money if I didn't take the trip. So I went to the, the boss and I said, um, well, listen, this is my circumstance. I had this book before I accepted this job. I'm not quite sure how you feel about this, but I just thought I would find out. And he said the best thing to me ever. He said, we don't care where you work. We don't care how you work once you get the job done. Right. And, oh my gosh, I would have stayed there forever. <laughs> <laughs> in my, the first day I thought that to myself, I said, I'm going to be very happy here after I heard that from him. So yeah, yeah I, I totally agree with a lot of what you're saying there. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Julie. You shared so much with us. We're just out of time now, but you shared so much with us, especially a lot of really... Um, insightful perspective of putting people first and i really like that mantra because at the end of the Absolutely. day that's what it's about it's about people hr is about people management but um i would so say also people engagement people it's so much more not just management doesn't just mean that control people yeah control, giving orders so much goes with management and you've also stressed the importance of looking out for employee well-being in remote working as well so thank Absolutely. you for everything that you shared and just Absolutely. before you go yes you no know, you got to give us that one funny travel story so here's my funny travel story oh dear <laughs> the first time i traveled with all three of my children back to the uk yeah. Um, they were, they were little, they were like all under 10. Yeah. And we landed and they were hungry. Yeah. And we got out of Gatwick airport, getting into um, my cousin's car to go where we were going. And um, mm -hmm. the children said, mommy, we're hungry. You can stop at Shafet. And I was like, there's no Shafet in the UK. They were, what? No shit. So they were super, super horrified. Their first experience in the UK. 
that there was no shafet for them <laughs> to eat. Oh my gosh. I never lived that down. Never lived that down. However, they discovered Pizza Hut and they were okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, runner up. That's a that's uh, okay ish. Yeah. Okay ish. Pizza. Semi yeah. runner up. I like Pizza Hut on a normal day, but compared to Shafet. Shafet? Yes. Where well, you have so many options, especially if you go to a barbecue barn. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes, our, our, our non Barbados audience, you we will, we will. You have to experience Shafet. Yeah. Invite you all to Barbados if only just to experience Shafet. Shafet. <laughs> Absolutely. So the moral of our episode today is to try Shafet. Shafet. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining us for another episode. And thank you again, Julie, for everything that you shared about remote working, remote positions, and also remote work well-being. My so, pleasure. Yeah. Next week, we're going to have a fireside with all of our guests from the previous four episodes, including Julie. And they're going to be coming back just to have a panel discussion about a lot of the things that we previously discussed and to kind of like throw back and forth some of those opinions across our different guests. So look out for episode five for that fireside chat. But for now, this has been episode four with Julie Turney speaking about um, how to make positions more work better remotely and also how to look out and to take care of your staff when they're working remotely as well. So thank you so much, Julie. And thank you My so pleasure. much to our listeners. And this has thank been you. another episode of Remotely Speaking Up. Take care for now. Bye. Bye.